Iloilo City, officially the city of Iloilo, Hiligaynon, Dokbanwa, Sayadad Sang Iloilo, Kinaraya, Sayadad Kong, Ka Iloilo, Filipino, Lungsod ng Iloilo, Spanish, Ciudad de Iloilo, is a highly urbanized city on the southeastern tip of Panay Island in the Philippines. It is the capital city of the province of Iloilo where it is geographically situated but, in terms of government and administration, it is politically independent. In addition, it is the center of the Iloilo Guimaras metropolitan area, as well as the regional center and primate city of the western Visayas region. In the 2015 census, Iloilo City had a population of 447,992 inhabitants, with a 1.02% population annual growth rate. For the metropolitan area, the total population is 946,146 inhabitants. Iloilo City is bordered by the towns of Aden in the west, Pavia in the north and Legaines in the northeast. Just across the Iloilo Strait in its eastern and southern coastlines, are the towns of Buenavista and Jordan in the island province of Guimaras. The city was a conglomeration of former towns, which are now the geographical districts consisting of Villa Arevalo, Iloilo City proper, Jaro, an independent city before, La Paz, Manduriao and Molo. The district of Lapuz, a former part of La Paz, was declared a separate district in 2008. The city's earliest establishment dates back in 1566 when Ogtong, a town west of the city, was established when Spanish conquistador Miguel López de Legazpi moved his headquarters from the island of Cebu. Later due to the frequent coastal raids by the Moro pirates and Dutch and English privateers, the Spanish governor-general Gonzalo Ronquillo de Peñalosa moved the colonial center in Panay Island from the town of Ogtong Aden, eastward and formally founded the town of La Villa Rica de Arevalo, Arevalo, in 1581, a present-day district of Iloilo City. Iloilo City earned its title, La Muy Leal y Noble Ciudad. Most loyal and noble city through a royal decree by Queen Regent Maria Cristina of Spain through the city's loyalty to the Spanish crown during the Philippine Revolution thus it earned its moniker through that title as the Queen's City of the South or Queen Regent's City of the South, a title that through the years because of Iloilo S. Socioeconomic importance and prominence next to Manila during Spanish colonial period has been colloquially referred to its form as Queen City of the South. The city's Spanish inception and the royal decree further implies its status and reputation as the second Spanish royal city after Manila in the Philippines. Iloilo is known as the heart of the Philippines and Asia's city of love. Because of Iloilo and Panay Island's central location in the Philippines and the soft and gentle spoken Ilongo people, and as emerging museum city of the Philippines and city of mansions, because of heritage structures and mansions clustered in the city built during the Spanish and American colonial eras. The city's district of the former city of Jaro is the seat of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Jaro with its widely venerated patron Nuestra Señora de la Candelaria enshrined at the National Shrine of Our Lady of Candles, Jaro Cathedral, is the official patron of Western Visayas and Remblan. The Marian statue of Candelaria perched atop the facade of Jaro Cathedral is the only Marian statue and image in the Philippines personally crowned by a pope and saint, Pope John Paul II. The United States colonization of the Philippine Islands, with Iloilo as one of the first American colonial outposts and with the Americans brought their faith the Protestantism, paved the way in founding of numerous institutions that made Iloilo pioneer in the Philippines through the establishment of the American titan John D. Rockefeller-funded Central Philippine University, the first Baptist and second American and Protestant university in the Philippines and in Asia, Iloilo Mission Hospital, the first Protestant and American hospital in the Philippines, Jaro Evangelical Church, the first Baptist and second Protestant church in the Philippines, Jaro Adventist Center, the first organized Adventist church in the Philippines, and Convention of Philippine Baptist Churches, the first organized Baptist churches union in the Philippines. During the decline of the Spanish Empire stronghold in the Visayan Islands in the late 1890s, the revolutionaries established Iloilo City as the capital of the short-lived Estado Federal de Visayas, Federal State of the Visayas, with its jurisdiction encompassing the islands of Panay, Guimaras, Remblan, Cebu and Bohol plus the Republic of Negros. 
Iloilo is the last capital of the Spanish Empire in Asia and the Pacific before the Philippines was ceded by Spain to the United States in 1898. History Period of Malay mass migration According to ancient legends, some of the inhabitants of Panay Island were originally from other islands, including Borneo, Sulawesi, and Sumatra. Panay might be named after the Kingdom of Panay which is located in Sumatra, since I and Y are interchangeable in Spanish. Proof for this is corroborated by linguistic evidence. Local tradition refers to the name as a shortening of the ATI Aboriginal Negrito inhabitants of the island word, Pananape. Probably, it was what the ATIs had come to use for the name given by the Malay settlers to their newly found home. Some historians also affirm the Sumatran origin of the people of Panay, observing that the Visayans derived their writing system from those of Toba, Borneo, Celebes, ancient Java, and from the edicts of the ancient Indian emperor Ashoka. The very probable proof of Sumatran origin of the Malay settlement in Panay is the account of P. Francisco Colin, S.J., a historian who came to Asia during the early years of the Spanish conquest of the Philippines. The following is his personal observation recorded during his visit to Sumatra. In the middle of Sumatra, there is a spacious and extensive lake, presumably Lake Toba near Panay, around the shore of which many and several ethnic groups settle, and from where, in the past, there was a forced exodus of inhabitants, constraining them to sail to and to settle in various islands. One of these ethnic groups was subjugated there and they were unable to flee for various circumstances. Someone speaking Pampango, which I heard before, found out that they were not speaking Pampango among themselves, but they, the Malays of Sumatra, donned the old Pampango ethnic costume. And when he addressed an old man among them, the old man replied, You are descendants of the lost, that in times past left this place to settle in other lands, and nothing was heard about them again. So, Colin concluded that the Tagalogs and Pampangos, and other political or ethnic groups, Visayans and other related civilized groups, by symbols used in expressing language, by color of dress and costume, one can believe that these came from parts of Borneo and Sumatra. The phrase, subjugated ethnic groups, gives hint to the encroaching of the Majapahit Empire into the falling Srivijaya Empire, or perhaps to the Islamization of Sumatra, forcing the inhabitants to look for safer territories where they could preserve their freedom and culture. This resonates with the local Panay tradition regarding the arrival of ten Datus from Borneo. The Kingdom of Panay was a militant nation allied under the Srivijaya Mandala that defended the conflict-ridden Strait of Malacca. The Visayan lore says that in the 13th century, ten Bornean Datus came to the island which they named Panay, Panay or Panay, after the fallen kingdom of Panay or a shortening of the ATI word for the island, Ananape. This, after they dissented from the unjust rule of a certain Raja Makatunao and exiled themselves. Upon arriving on the island of Panay, they gave a golden hat, salakot, and a long pearl necklace called Manangyad in the Hiligaynon language, meaning a long necklace that touches or Nagasangyad. The ground, as a peace offering and treaty items to the ATI natives of the island. It was said that it was also a way of the ten Bornean Datus to barter the flat lands of Panay from the ATI. One Datu, named Pibarong, was given the territory of Iron Iron, CF, also Kadatuan of Madya as. The Kadatuan of Madya as centered in Panay Island eventually grew a powerful and strong naval presence that it rivaled the nearby states of the Rajanate of Cebu, the Kingdom of Manila and the Sultanate of Sulu when it came to wealth and prestige. In Panay, according to Friar Gaspar de San Agustin, O.S.A. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 in the ancient times, there was a trading center and a court of the most illustrious nobility in the whole island. By the 14th century, under Datu Padojanog, this state had grown so powerful militarily and economically, their naval power regularly threatened Chinese imperial shipping. This was so much so, that the Chuan Cho Gazetteer specifically reported that the Pichea Bisaya, another term for people from Iron Iron, consistently made devastating raids against the empire's commerce. Early Spanish colonial period 
In 1566, as the Spanish conquest of the Philippines was underway and moving north toward Manila, the Spaniards launched several expeditions from Mexico and under Miguel López de Legazpi, came to Panay and established a settlement in Ogtong, Aden. Unlike the Indianized Cebuanos who were neutral to the Spaniards or the partially Islamized Tagalogs of Manila who were more hostile, the people of Madya as welcomed the Iberians as allies since at that time period, Madya as was locked in a war against the invading Muslims, especially with the Sultanate of Brunei and its vassal states, the Sultanate of Sulu and the Kingdom of Manila which, according to Spanish Governor General Francisco de Sande, are their blood cousins. The people then fervently accepted Christianity as they supplied the bulk of the mercenaries used in the conquest of partially Islamized Manila, whose rulers were related to the Sultan of Brunei. When the Spaniards came to the Visayas, they noted that the pirates among them were more terrifying than the Mohammedans of Jolo and Mindanao. All year long, after the harvest, they would sail toward faraway places to hunt slaves and make surprise attacks on settlements. Those who did not live along the rivers, would make their raids in the months of February, March, April, October and November, going deeper into the interior parts of the islands, sacking the villages. These raiding expeditions are called pangubat, noun, or mangubat, gerund verb form. In 1581, Ronquillo moved the colonial center from Ogtong to approximately 12 kilometers, 7. 5 miles, eastward due to recurrent raids by Moro pirates and Dutch and English privateers. He renamed this new colonial seat La Villa de Arevalo in honor of his hometown in Avila, Spain. Ronquillo also settled groups of Spanish and Mexican soldiers to become the first colonists of Arevalo as he built his mansion in the area. At the early days of the Spanish period, the first Manila galleons were originally constructed at the port of Aden to the west of Iloilo. Since there was no precedent in Spain for the immensity of a Manila galleon, it could be argued that the prototype Manila galleons were a Visayan design since the Visayans were already constructing huge multi-masted four to five deck caracoas in their wars against the other kingdoms and thus, the technical know-how to construct the first Manila galleons was an amelioration of Visayan shipbuilding with Spanish shipbuilding. Aden built the first Manila galleons before operations were eventually transferred to the Bicol and Cavite shipyards. In the year 1600, a large Muslim attack on Iloilo City was launched, with a force of 70 ships and 4,000 warriors, raiding and attacking several Visayan islands in order to abduct slaves. However, the attack was repulsed by a force of 1,000 Visayan warriors and 70 Mexican arquebusiers under the command of the Don Juan Garcia de Sierra, the Spanish alcalde mayor, who died in battle, in 1635, in an effort to check the Islamic slave raiding into the Visayas Islands. The Christian Visayans from Iloilo together with Spanish officers and their Latino soldiers from Peru soon founded Zamboanga City and settled in it, using it as fortress to prevent Moro attacks in the Visayas, and as a staging ground for Christian campaigns into Muslim Mindanao. In 1700, due to ever-increasing attacks especially from the Dutch and the Moros, the Spaniards again moved their seat of power some 25 kilometers 16 miles eastward to the village of Iron Iron, which had natural and strategic defense against raids. At the mouth of the river that snakes through Panay, the Spaniards built Fort San Pedro to better guard against the raids which were now the only threat to their hold on the islands. Iron Iron or Along Along was shortened to Iloilo. Later, the natural port area quickly became the capital of the province. Sugar Boom Era and the Late Spanish Colonial Period After its establishment under Spanish rule, Iloilo received Chinese migrants from the west which worked among the city. S. Industries, the Loxon, Lopez, Gelandoni, Lim and Sai families, and Latinos from across the Pacific Viceroyalty of New Spain to man its military fortifications, the Araneta, de Rama and Arroyo families. In the late 18th century, the development of large-scale weaving industry started the movement of Iloilo's surge in trade and economy in the Visayas. Sometimes referred to as the textile capital of the Philippines. The products were exported to Manila and other foreign places. Cinema, Piña, and UC are examples of the products produced by the looms of Iloilo. Because of the rise of the textile industry, there was also a rise of the upper middle class. However, with the introduction of cheap textile from the UK and the emergence of the sugar economy, the industry waned in the mid-19th century. 
The waning textile industry was replaced, however, by the opening of Iloilo's port to the world market in 1855. Because of this, Iloilo's industry and agriculture was put on direct access to foreign markets. But what triggered the economic boom of Iloilo in the 19th century was the development of the sugar industry in Iloilo and its neighboring island of Negros. Sugar during the 19th century was of high demand. Nicholas Loney, the British vice consul in Iloilo, developed the industry by giving loans, constructing warehouses in the port, and introducing new technologies in sugar farming. The rich families of Iloilo developed large areas of Negros, which were later called haciendas, because of sugar's high demand in the world market. Because of the increase in commercial activity, infrastructures, recreational facilities, educational institutions, banks, foreign consulates, commercial firms and much more sprouted in Iloilo. On 5 October 1889, due to the economic development that was happening in Iloilo making it the most important port in the Philippine Islands next to Manila, Iloilo was raised from the status of a town to a city through a royal decree, and in 1890, the city government was established. The Revolutionary Period The immediate reaction of Ilongo elite to the outbreak of the 1896 rebellion in Manila was that of surprise. They immediately responded with protestations of outrage and affirmed their loyalty to Spain. The Alongos themselves were united in their support of Spain during the first two years of the revolutionary period, shortly after the cry of Balintawak, the Jaro Ayuntamiento, another colonial city adjacent to Iloilo City, composed of native Alongos, convened a special session on September 1, 1896, where the Manila uprising was condemned as an unpatriotic act. That finds no echo in the noble hearts of Geranios, who do not forget the immense gratitude they owe Spain who, from nothing, raised us to a life of civilization and progress." The Ayuntamiento of Iloilo also affirmed its allegiance and loyalty to Spain and made a similar protestation. Condemning the uprising, the city's letter to the Governor-General says. Those dark betrayals, the mere notion of which embarrasses good and loyal Filipinos, have produced a unanimous sentiment of protest and indignation among the Alongo people, who engraves its most honorable blazon in the sacred and inextinguishable love that it professes to the glorious Spanish nationality that it legitimately feels proud of. The Alongos are Spaniards, Your Excellency, and Spaniards will they be until death, because they do not want to live and die in another way than under the shadow of the August Castilian standard, to which they owe being dignified and free men now." The foreign community in the city also asked its representatives to visit local authorities and to elevate their protests against the revolt. And so did the Filipino parish priests of Jaro, Molo, Manduriao, and Arevalo. Towns in Iloilo province also condemned the Manila uprising, and those of the neighboring provinces of Capiz and Antique, as well as the island of Negros, followed suit. This emboldened the Alongo elite to initiate the organization of volunteers to be sent to quell what was seen as a mostly Tagalog rebellion. The move was backed by the Spanish and foreign communities of Iloilo. A battalion of 500 native volunteers was raised, which was divided into two companies, and placed under the cadre of mostly Spanish officers. They arrived in Manila on 16 January 1897. They were one of the largest native contingent to serve the government forces against Katipunan troops led by Emilio Aguinaldo. In the battlegrounds of Cavite province, the Alongo volunteers established for themselves a distinguished combat record in Cavite. Once the Pact of Biak na Bato was signed, they returned to Iloilo. In April 1898 their homecoming, just like their departure, was met with much fanfare. This galvanized the Alongos into more public outpourings and manifestations of loyalty to Spain. Due to the loyalty of the Alongos, the city of Iloilo was honored with the perpetual title of Muy Noble. The royal decree granting this title was signed on 1 March 1898 by Queen Regent Maria Cristina. Over time, this title earned for Iloilo City the reputation of it being the Queen's favored city in the South, or simply Queen's City in the South, being the second Spanish port of importance next to Manila, and being located south of the archipelago's capital. 
On a side note, at the beginning of the American period, Cebu became the second port of importance, Iloilo having been partly ravaged by bombardment, fire, and riot during the American occupation of Iloilo City. Yet, it was also during this period of Philippine history that Iloilo was more popularly known as the Queen City of the South. This points to the fact that the moniker was associated to the Queen Regent's favor and to the honorary title granted to Iloilo City as Muy Noble Ciudad, due to the loyalty of its citizens to the Spanish crown. Besides, the Ilongos, who were among the first allies of the Spanish crown in the archipelago, contributed in the Spanish conquest of Luzon. It was in Arevalo, later, a district of Iloilo City, Panay that the conquest of Luzon was planned and launched, on 8 May 1570, with the help of seafaring inhabitants of the island. After the defeat of the Spanish forces at the Battle of Manila Bay during the Spanish-American War, the capital of the Spanish East Indies was transferred to Iloilo, with General Diego de los Rios as the new governor-general residing in the city. A truce was declared between the American and the Spanish forces pending the negotiations of the joint commission of both warring countries in Paris, France for the terms of peace. Meanwhile, General Aguinaldo sent several small vessels to Panay with Tagalog revolutionaries in order to stir up rebellion in the Visayas. He was anxious to secure all territories he could before the conditions for peace should be settled in Paris. At stake was the hope that actual possession of territories would influence the final decision. By October 1898, fresh Tagalog expeditions were sent to Panay and coerced or persuaded its people to rise in greater force than ever, until finally, General de los Rios had to fall back to Iloilo. By the middle of November, after having secured the support of the inhabitants of the towns outside Iloilo through the leadership of General Martín Delgado, practically the whole island of Panay, except for the city proper, Jaro, La Paz, and Molo, was under the revolutionary dominion. By December, de los Rios held only the city and port of Iloilo. On 25 December 1898, 15 days after the signing of the Treaty of Paris on 10 December, the Spanish government surrendered to the Ilongo revolutionaries at Plaza Alfonso XII, Plaza Libertad today. Military provincial governor Ricardo Monet, who was representing Governor General de los Rios, together with Lieutenant Call. Agustin Solis, formally handed over Plaza Alfonso XII to Delgado, who represented Emilio Aguinaldo, president of the newly established Philippine Republic, in Iloilo. Delgado was named provincial governor afterwards. The newly found freedom of the Ilongos would be short-lived. The American forces arrived in Iloilo on 27 December 1898, under the command of General Marcus P. Miller, and were afterwards reinforced up to a total strength of about 3,000 troops and two ships, to take possession of the territory in accordance with the Treaty of Paris. Filipino-American War after the Spanish forces left the city, the revolutionary forces made a formal entry amidst music and banners. A government was constituted. On 17 January 1899, an election placed Raimundo Meliza, of a notable family from Molo that was respected by both the natives and foreigners, to office as mayor. However, the influence of the new regime established by the government of Aguinaldo did not have effective extent far beyond a day's march from the capital. At the threshold of the city and province of Iloilo, the Americans were waiting for signal from Manila. Two more ships supplemented the U.S. forces, even though no clashes with the revolutionaries took place after the Spaniards abandoned the city. Miller expressed demands for the surrender of Iloilo but no gun was fired. The Americans were waiting for the right moment, for it was not until 6 February 1899 that the American Senate ratified the Treaty of Paris. On 4 February, hostilities broke out between Aguinaldo forces and the Americans in Luzon. Emissaries brought Aguinaldo's message to the Ilongos to hold the city against the enemies. The demand for surrender was renewed by Miller, on 7 February, upon receipt of orders from Manila, with the threat to bombard Iloilo by the twelfth day of the month if no surrender would take place. As the Americans were preparing to attack the city, the 1,650 native troops under General Martin Delgado became uncontrollable and insolent to their officers. They were promised a monthly remuneration of PHP-4 and food, but only received PHP-1. 
Threats of mutiny, sacking and burning of the city, forced the generals to collect money from the towns of Panay in order to appease the Visayan contingents. The same thing happened to the Tagalog component of the troops. The danger of riots in the city and the attitude of native soldiers fomented fear among the inhabitants. Chinese merchants closed their stores leaving only a small hole for transacting business. Many prominent families, who were in constant fear for their safety, went over to Negros Island in small schooners that flew the Philippine flag, without having any trouble with the American ships on standby in the waters between the two islands. On 10 February, an extraordinary session at the City Hall discussed plans for the impending bombardment of the city. There was a proposal to burn Iloilo, but the mayor protested to this barbarous plan. A majority in the meeting was in favor of burning, which was seen as an invitation to despoil, lay waste and slay. The instigators who had no property interests in Iloilo, but who were so jealous of those who have found a ready response of the Tagalog mercenaries, who had no local attachment to the city, the Americans fired the first shell on the 11th of February 1899. Foreign eyewitnesses observed that the bombardment damaged quite a few buildings. In the meantime, from early morning, the withdrawing native soldiers, followed by a riffraff mob, were observed to have rushed hither and thither, throwing firebrands onto petroleum-washed houses. The Chinese had to barricade themselves to no use since fire burned their bazaars. Europeans and the Spanish half-castes had to defend themselves with every means possible, including bribing the rioters with a few pesos. Two British warships in the roadstead sent boats ashore and landed a party of marines, who made a gallant effort to save foreign properties, as the United Kingdom had a strong business interest in Iloilo and a consulate. By 1 o'clock of the same day, the Americans made a landing and restored order. Sentinels were stationed to protect what still remained of the townspeople. S. Goods. In due course, indemnity claims were forwarded to the American military authorities, but were all rejected. Ten years later, an article published in the local paper Nuevo Geraldo summarized the downfall of the Queen City in these words. The fire left behind only the name Iloilo, as the main part of the city was reduced to ashes by the retreating Ilongo troops. That event was the cause of the ruin of such a beautiful city, second only to Manila, where, if there was not a surplus of money, neither the people's welfare was wanting, and life was prosperous and peaceful. If the brain who planted such an unqualified act had measured the consequences, maybe he would never have dared doing it. By February 1899, the Americans had started mobilizing to colonize anew the city and province. They continued to meet resistance from the Alongos, which lasted up to 1901. In which case, Iloilo was also among the last cities to fall to Americans. Many leaders surrendered to the new regime and were reintegrated to the Alongo society without conditions. Among them was General Martin Delgado, who accepted the position of governor of the province of Iloilo from 1901 to 1904, under the American flag. He was, at that time, the highest paid governor in the whole archipelago, receiving $3,000 gold annually. Local government was established in some towns of Iloilo by the 11th of April 1901. Jose Maria Gay was appointed alcalde, Matias Javiernas was Teniente Alcalde of Iloilo, Jose Yusei was President of Molo, Pablo Borromeo was President of Arevalo, Ruperto Montanola was the lone representative of Jaro, but was not its president, Maduriao's president was Emigdio Mesa. Emilio Magbanua was appointed its police delegate. It was observed by Juan de Leon, judge of the court of first instance that there existed a rivalry between the pueblos of Iloilo, Jaro and Molo, which are adjacent to and are only half an hour travel by carriage from each other. Besides, Molo and Jaro are residential pueblos, and Iloilo was the business town for both. It was also recommended that Arevalo be joined to Molo, and La Paz to Jaro. The aggregate population of these territories was at 100,000 in 1901. Presidents and other representatives were also appointed for the towns of Alamodian, Miagao, Genie, Mina, Aden, Pasi, Gimbal, 
Pototan, San Joaquin, Santa Barbara, San Miguel, Pavia, Serra, Nagaba currently known as Nueva Valencia, San Enrique, Lambunao, Córdoba, a barangay of Tigbauan today, Cabachuan, Leganes, Tigbauan, Benete, Buena Vista, Navales, Tubungan, Duenas, Mandiriao, Masan, Lucina, and Leon. Other formerly existing ones, like Analao and Barotac Viejo, were fused with other towns. As the aftermath of the Revolution and the Filipino American War, it was clear to all the most sober minded and best educated Alongos that Aguinaldo's government was a failure in Panay at least. Visayans of position, with property interests at stake, were convinced that absolute independence without any control or protection from some established political power was premature and doomed to disaster. The Visayan grudge against the Tagalog predominance was also a factor that contributed to the failure of Aguinaldo. S government. But the aggravating factor was the dictatorial air and brutal conduct of the Tagalog troops, which destroyed the theory of fraternal unity. Ananias Diocno, the Tagalog contingents. Leader known for severity in his Capiz and Iloilo campaigns, left a lasting non-commendable remembrance in the history of Panay. American colonial era In 1900, the Americans reverted the city's status into a township. Later, they initiated the construction of the Balwarte and Arroyo Streets, extension of Delgado Street to Valeria and from Fuentes and Gelandoni Streets up to the present-day UP in the Visayas. Quezon and Mabina Streets were asphalted while their sidewalks were also constructed. More significant was the installation of streetlights all throughout the city in 1921. In 1926, the widening of important streets, like General Luna, J.M. Basa and Ledesma, was started. In 1927, an improved street, Valeria Ledesma, formerly known as Weiler, was inaugurated David 1937. During the American colonial regime that time in the Philippine Islands, the Americans brought with them their faith, the Protestantism. A comedy agreement was made in 1898 that the Philippine Islands would be divided into different Protestant denominations for missionary works to avoid future conflicts. Iloilo is one of the very first places in the country where the early Protestant sects came. Western Visayas and Negroes, in accordance with the comedy agreement, was given to the religious jurisdictions of the Baptists, although other Protestant sects were allowed to do missions in the same area. The Protestant missionaries initiated large-scale enterprises in the predominantly Catholic province. The Presbyterians established the first Protestant and American hospital in the country, the Iloilo Mission Hospital. Supposedly it came also that Iloilo is the original location for foundation of Silliman University, the first Protestant and American university in the country and in Asia. However, due to the Catholic opposition where the school will stand, the founder, David Hibbard, prospected some new locations. He went to Cebu and later had a side trip in Dumaguete City, where he had a decision to establish and where Silliman University is presently located. Baptists on the other hand, established institutions like Central Philippine University in 1905, as the first Baptist founded and second American university in Asia, the Jaro Evangelical Church, the first Baptist church in the Philippines, and the Convention of Philippine Baptist Churches, the oldest Baptist organizational body in the Philippines. Later, the Seventh-day Adventists established the Jaro Adventist Center, the first organized Seventh-day Adventist church in the islands. Central Philippine University was established through a grant given by the American industrialist and oil magnate John D. Rockefeller. Central Philippine University pioneered the work-study program in the country which was later patterned and followed by other institutions and has also established the first and oldest student governing body in Southeast Asia modeled on the American civil government. The Central Philippine University Republic in 1906 after the Jaro Industrial School, CPU's forerunner, was established. On the other hand, Protestant Presbyterians who established the Iloilo Mission Hospital established the Union Mission Hospital Training School for Nurses which later became Central Philippine University College of Nursing, the first nursing school in the Philippines. Up to the present, the various evangelical Protestant denominations composing around 2.8% of the Filipinos and their educational institutions also serve Catholic students in Iloilo, who make up 83% of the population. 
Seizure of friar lands and parishes and the above-mentioned Protestant activities gave the American and Filipino public an impression of anti-Catholic stance of the U.S. occupation of the islands during the first years of the American rule. The Taft Commission, the sole legislative body of the American government for the Philippines then known as the Philippine Islands under the sovereign control of the United States while still under the Philippine-American War, were attacked by Catholic press in New York for anti-Catholic bigotry. Soon, pressures from influential Catholics in the United States, and also in Ireland caused President Theodore Roosevelt to appoint a Catholic in the commission to defend Catholic interest in the Philippines. Influential Catholics in Manila followed suit. Worries about Catholic vote in national elections moved the civil government to send the commission to the Vatican to negotiate exploring workable to solutions to the Catholic question in the newly acquired territory. Before coming to Rome, the head of the commission personally visited the Cardinal Archbishop of Baltimore. Pace by pace, acceptable solutions were employed. In 1902, the President of the United States of America commissioned two American Augustian friars to pioneer a movement to send American priests out to the Philippines to replace the Spanish friars, who diminished in number, 1,013 in 1898 to 246 in 1903, due to normal loss of personnel due to death or retirement, death caused by native hostilities, or voluntary return to Spain. In Iloilo, American Catholics countered the Protestant American missions and the American Catholic bishops bishops, like Frederick Rooker, Dennis Joseph Doherty, and James McCloskey, were named for the Roman Catholic See of Jaro in Iloilo City. These bishops sustained the educational achievements of the Spanish friars by bringing in American and European Catholic missionaries, among whom were the Sisters of Charity of St. Paul, and Augustinian missionary priests. The Augustinians, who were the first to bring the Christian faith in the Philippines as well as in Panay Island, and who built the centuries-old heritage churches in this island, established the Colegio de San Agustin in 1904. During the American regime, their confrères from the United States developed ever more this institution, which later became the first university in Iloilo. The American Catholic bishops also maintained and upgraded the St. Vincent Ferrer Seminary, established in 1869 as the Colegio Seminario de San Vicente Ferrer, which was the first institution of higher learning in Western Visayas. The Paulinian sisters took charge of St. Paul Hospital, originally owned by the Catholic Diocese of Jaro. Bishop Dennis Joseph Doherty, who later became Cardinal Archbishop of Philadelphia, gave the medical facilities to the sisters. To commemorate the bishop's generosity, the hospital named a more recent section of the facilities after him, the CADMA Cardinal Doherty Medical Annex. To meet the growing need to provide nurses for their hospital, the Paulinians also opened a nursing school. Today, this institution has also become a university, Street. Paul University Iloilo, and has ever since supplied high-quality healthcare professionals known worldwide for their skills and dedication to work. During the American colonial occupation, one of the platforms by the colonial government was first to establish and implement a public education system in the islands and the Thomasites were deployed and commissioned by the American government to teach in the public schools that will be established. The Thomasites tolerated religious freedom, which is one of the foundations of the United States Constitution and legacy to the Philippines, while commissioned and under their tutelage to teach in public schools during the colonial period. Public schools that were established when the Thomasites came to Iloilo or Iloilo Normal School, the present-day West Visayas State University, formally established in 1924 but dates back its founding in 1902 as part of the Philippine Normal School System in the Philippines, the Iloilo National High School, the first public provincial high school in the islands, and Balwarte Elementary School, the first public elementary school in the islands. Iloilo regained cityhood status on July 16, 1937, through Commonwealth Act 158. Incorporated as part of Iloilo City were the towns of Molo, Manduriao, La Paz, and Villa de Arevalo and inaugurated on August 25, 1937. The city of Jaro on the other hand was merged later years after with the city. Sugar's demand was declining, labor unrests in the port area scared the investors away, and the opening of the sub-port of Pulapandan in Negros Occidental moved the sugar importation closer to the sugar farms. Japanese Occupation 1942-1945 By 1942, the Japanese invaded Panay and the economy moved into a standstill. 
During World War II, Iloilo was controlled by several Japanese battalions. Japan's ultimate goal was to entrench itself deeply into the Philippines so that at the close of the war they could occupy it just as the Spanish and the Americans had years before. During the invasion of Japanese forces, the academic life in Iloilo was interrupted during the broke of World War II and Central Philippine University which was founded by the Americans was one of the heavily torn academic institutions during that time. The entire properties of the university on its main campus were destroyed and turned into ashes. American missionaries assigned at Central fled and took refuge in the mountain barrios of Katipunan, Tapas, Capiz. They hid in the forest they called Hopevale, with the help of their Filipino friends. But soon they fell and were captured by the Japanese troops on 19 December 1943. The missionaries begged them to free the Filipino captives and instead offered themselves as ransom. At the dawn of 20 December 1943, the missionaries asked to be allowed to pray and, an hour later, they told their Japanese captors they were ready to die. The adults were beheaded and the children were bayoneted. The missionaries who died in the massacre are today called the Hopevale Martyrs. The martyrs are, Dr. Francis Howard Rose, former president and head of Central, Jeannie Claire Adams, professor. James Howard Clovel, Charma Moore Clovel, Dorothy Antoinette Dowell, Signe Amelia Erickson, Dr. Frederick Willer Meyer, Ruth Schach Meyer, Gertrude Coombs Rose, Rev. Earl Frederick Rounds, Louise Cummings Rounds, and Earl Douglas. Despite the order that these Americans should go home because of the war, they refused to leave their mission and eventually sacrificed their lives. After post war, the reconstruction of the main campus out of ashes is made possible by returning missionaries and benevolent people from the United States, which includes also Filipino people. On the other hand, however, when Iloilo was liberated by Filipino and American forces from Japanese military occupation on March 25, 1945, the remnants of these battalions were held in Jaro Plaza as a makeshift detention facility. Post-war decline and recovery The war heavily damaged the infrastructure in Iloilo. However, the continuing conflict between the labor unions in the port area, declining sugar economy, and the deteriorating peace and order situation in the countryside, the exodus of Alongos to other cities, provinces, regions and islands that offered better opportunities and business. People were moving to other cities such as Bacolod, Cebu, and Manila that led to Iloilo's decline in economic importance in central Philippines. Rural agricultural areas continued to help the local economy. For years, because of this exodus of investors, Iloilo's economy progressed in a moderate pace, change slowly came. First came the construction of the fishing port and a new international seaport. One by one, commercial business firms invested in Iloilo, spurring on the city to its eventual recovery. Iloilo became a highly urbanized city in 1979 by the virtue of Batas Pambansa BLG, 51. Corollary to this new status, its residents effectively lost their eligibility to vote for provincial officials. After the opening of the new commercial and business center in Mandiriao District and with the construction of a national highway that traverses this area, big businesses like the SM Supermalls, SM Prime Holdings, Megaworld Corporation, Gaisano Capital, and Ayala Corporation poured in huge investments in the city, giving impetus and catalyst toward future progress. Geography Iloilo City is located in the southern shores of Panay Island. The city faces Iloilo Strait and Guimaras Island across it, making it a natural harbor and a safe anchorage for ships. The city lies on a flat alluvial plain, reclaimed mostly from the swampy areas due to urbanization and industrialization in the late 19th century until the present. Traversing the city are the rivers of Iloilo, Batiano, Jaro and Dungan Creek. Iloilo River is an estuary that separates the districts of city proper, Molo and Villa Arevalo from the rest of the city. On the other hand, Jaro River is fed by its tributary rivers, Aganan and Tigum. Lately a new escape channel for floodwaters coming from these two rivers to Iloilo Strait was developed, the Jaro Floodway. Iloilo City is 337.6 nautical miles 630 kilometers from Manila, 116 kilometers 72 miles from Roxas City, 158 kilometers 98 miles from Calibo, and 97 kilometers 60 miles from San Jose de Buenavista. 
The city has a total land area of 70.3 square kilometers, 27.1 square miles. The city is divided into 7 geographical districts. All of the districts were once individual towns, excluding La Puz, which was a subdistrict of La Paz until 2008. They were merged into one city on August 25, 1937, when the current Iloilo City inaugurated as a charter city. All districts have their own town centers complete with a plaza, a Roman Catholic church, a fire station, a police station and a public market. City proper is a commercial area and the political center of the city and the province of Iloilo and the regional government center of Western Visayas. Iloilo City is the center of the only officially recognized metropolitan area in Western Visayas. The metropolitan area is composed of the city of Iloilo, the municipalities of Leganes, Pavia, Sta. Barbara, Cabachuan, San Miguel, Aden, the island province of Guimaras and its five municipalities, namely, Sibinig, San Lorenzo, Nueva Valencia, Buenavista and Jordan. The city of Iloilo has only one legislative district and is subdivided into 180 barangays barrios. Climate Iloilo City has a tropical wet and dry climate as according to the Köppen climate classification system, with pronounced wet season from June throughout November, then dry season from December to May. Demographics Language Hiligaynon is the dominant language of Iloilo City. English is used as the language of business and education. In addition, other local languages such as Korea also known as Kinaraya or Hinaraya is also spoken by a few. Spanish, once widely spoken during the colonial era up to the 1980s, is still spoken by the elderly, some wealthy families and also the elder members of the micro-community of sugar plantations related clans. Hiligaynon is spoken in western Visayas and Negros Island region, and is part of the Visayan language family of the Malayo-Polynesian languages. It is heavily influenced by Spanish. Hiligaynon is mainly concentrated in the provinces of Iloilo, Guimaras and Negros Occidental. The language is referred to as Alongo, Spanish, Alongo, Longo, in Iloilo and Negros Occidental. More precisely, Alongo is the ethno-linguistic group referring to the inhabitants of Iloilo and the culture associated with native Hiligaynon speakers. The distinction between the terms, Alongo and Hiligaynon, is unclear however, as most of the townspeople are claiming that Hiligaynon is the language being spoken and Alongo is a term used to refer a person living in Iloilo or its associated culture and ethnicity. Religion Iloilo City is one of the notable centers of faith in the Philippines. Due to the heavy influence of Spanish colonization that has imprinted on the culture of Iloilo, the city's population is predominant Catholic with 90% belonging to He Roman Catholic Church. Other religious minorities such as Protestants 7%, Iglesia ni Cristo 2%, and Aglipayans 1%, also a form of Episcopal Protestantism, have a significant presence at the city. The former city of Jaro, one of the present districts or boroughs of the Iloilo, is the seat of notable and pioneer Christian institutions not only in western Visayas but the whole Philippines through the Spanish and American colonization. The Spaniards which brought the Catholic faith established the Roman Catholic Metropolitan See of the Archdiocese of Jaro while the Americans which brought the Protestantism established the Convention of Philippine Baptist Churches, the first and oldest Baptist churches organization in the Philippines, the Jaro Evangelical Church, the first Baptist church in the Philippine Islands, and Jaro Adventist Center, first organized Adventist church in the Philippines. The Roman Catholic Archdiocese is one of the oldest sees in the country. It was created a diocese by virtue of a papal bull of Pope Pius IX on May 27, 1865 and covers the provinces of Iloilo and Guimaras, an island off Iloilo. San Jose de Buenavista on Panay, Bacolod, San Carlos and Cabancalan in Negros Occidental, are suffragans the Archdiocese is one of largest dioceses, Archdiocese during its heyday is its religious jurisdiction encompassing Mindoro, Palawan, and Zamboanga. It lost some of its territory to establish the Diocese of Zamboanga and Apostolic Prefecture of Palawan. Much later, three other ecclesiastical jurisdictions were established from parts of its territory, Diocese of Bacolod, 15 July 1932, Apostolic Prefecture of Mindoro, 2 July 1936, and Diocese of Capiz, 27 January 1951. 
It was raised into a metropolitan archdiocese by Pope Pius XII. Later on 24 March 1962, it lost some territory that resulted to the establishment the territorial prelature of San José de Antique. The Jaro Cathedral National Shrine of the Our Lady of Candles is the seat of the Archdiocese of Jaro. Saint Elizabeth of Hungary and the Our Lady of Candles are the official Catholic patronesses of the archdiocese. The Nuestra Señora de la Candelaria or Our Lady of the Candles is the official patron of the whole western Visayas and Remblan. Its image or statue perched atop the facade of the cathedral is the first and only Marian image crowned by a pope and saint, Pope Saint John Paul II, in the Philippines. Protestant religion form as the second largest faith in the city of Iloilo. The arrival of Protestant sects bolstered when it was brought by the American prior after the Philippines was ceded to the American rule by Spain through the 1898 Treaty of Paris. Though the United States brought the Protestant faith as a backlash against the Roman Catholicism with Iloilo as one of the pioneering places that they set foot due to its economic importance in the international scene that Protestantism spread in the Philippines, the American colonial government tolerated religious freedom that even to this day Iloilo is still a predominantly Catholic. Presbyterians and Baptists are the first Protestant sects that arrived in Iloilo. The arrival of the said American Protestants' denominations resulted to the establishment of notable pioneer institutions in Iloilo. The Presbyterians established the Iloilo Mission Hospital in 1901, the first American and Protestant hospital in the Philippines, while Baptists established the American Titan John D. Rockefeller-funded Central Philippine University in 1905, the first Baptist and second American university in the Philippines and in Asia, Jaro Evangelical Church in 1900, the first Baptist church in the Philippines and also the first Protestant church outside Manila, second in the Philippines after the Central United Methodist Church in Manila, and the Convention of Philippine Baptist Churches, the first and oldest Baptist Churches organization in the Philippines. The Seventh-day Adventists which a Protestant sect also, did not join the early Protestant sects who came to the Philippines especially in Iloilo. They arrived years later during the advent of Protestant missions in the early 1900s in Iloilo. Their arrival resulted to the founding of Jaro Adventist Center, the first organized Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Philippines. There are other Christian religions that has significant adherence which has their presence in the city like the Iglesia Ni Cristo and Church of Christ of Latter-day Saints or Mormon and communities of non-Christian sects like Islam which brought by Muslim Filipinos from the South, Sikhism by the Indian immigrants, and Taoism and Buddhism which brought by Chinese immigrants. Culture Cultures and traditions has the crucial role that shaped Iloilo cultural and heritage sphere apart from the being the regional center of the Western Visayas region. Cultural and heritage consciousness is held in much broad public attention and fervor among the various stakeholders with the help of the government. Iloilo holds many cultural institutions especially national ones and heritage houses and mansions that contributed to Iloilo's monikers being known as Emerging Museum City of the Philippines and City of Mansions. Museums and art galleries The city has a dozen of museums covering a range fields including art, history and science. Museums and art galleries are the repositories of Iloilo's rich and glorious history in culture and arts. Various notable Philippine artists trace their roots from Iloilo. Unearthed artifacts like potteries and plates had been excavated in many parts of Iloilo that dates pre-Hispanic times are now showcased in various museums in Iloilo. Notable efforts of the city's engagement with various stakeholders to uplift the cultural consciousness of the Ilongo people led to the establishment of the Western Visayas Regional Museum of the National Museum of the Philippines in the former renovated and restored Old Iloilo Provincial Jail and their regional headquarters in the restored Old Municipio de Jaro, Jaro Municipal Hall. There are other museums that showcase memorabilia of notable person and families, artworks and artifacts that are contrast to the glorious past of Iloilo. 
The other notable museums and art galleries in the city in which some are under some academic institutions which include the Museo Iloilo, the first government-built museum in the Philippines, Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art Museum, housed at the Casa de Emperador at Iloilo Business Park, the Henry Luce III, Museum and Library, of Central Philippine University, University of San Agustin Museum, UPV Art Gallery, John B. Laxon Foundation Museum of Maritime Culture and Craft, Rosendo Medica Museum, among others others. The Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art, ILOMOCA, the first museum project of the property giant Megaworld Corporation, is the first museum dedicated to modern and contemporary art in Visayas and Mindanao. The museum of 3,000 square meters of space is housed at the Casa de Emperador, which includes five exhibit rooms and souvenir and merchandise shop. The ground floor is the Hulo exhibit, which showcase exhibits of local and international artists. Works by notable and renowned international artists like Salvador Dali, Marc Chagall, and Joan Miro are exhibit in some of its art collections. The Henry Luce III, Library and Museum, on Central Philippine University's main campus which was built through a benevolent grant given by the Henry Luce Foundation though Henry Luce III, the eldest son of the founder of Time Inc. Henry Luce. It holds an array of special museum collections categorized into various sections and types of collections, Meyer Asian Collection, the Elizabeth Knox Sacred Music Collection, rare collections of Second World War documents, Asian archaeological artifacts and historical exhibits, and artworks from known artists. A Henry Luce III, the main library of CPU library system, sole book holding implies it as the largest library in the western Visayas region. Festivals The Ilongos cultural identity is deeply rooted and influenced by the Hispanic culture. Iloilo is known as festivals capital of the Philippines with various renowned festivals in the country celebrated in the city showcasing the city's rich cultural and historical past. Iloilo is highlighted with various festivals in which Big Three is Dinagayang Festival, held every fourth Sunday of January in honor of the Holy Child Jesus, Santo Niño de Jesus, in a venerated image of Santo Niño de Cebu, the Jaro Fiesta, Fiesta de Jaro, or Fiesta de Nuestra Señora de la Candelaria, held every 2nd of February in honor of Nuestra Señora de la Candelaria, Virgin of Candelaria, the patron of Western Visayas and Remblan, is notable throughout the country with its image perched atop the facade of Jaro Cathedral, National Shrine of Our Lady of Candles, is the first Marian images crowned by a Pope and Saint, Pope John Paul II, in the Philippines. Jaro Fiesta's pageantry through the annual vesting of crown to be the Reina del Fiesta de Jaro, is exclusively selected from the notable old rich Spanish-Filipino families of Jaro, and the Para Regatta, held in February is considered as the oldest sailing event in Asia. Para Regatta which is held every February is the oldest sailing event in Asia, oldest traditional boat sailing event in Asia. Theaters The Iloilo Convention Center is a state-of-the-art convention center located in the Iloilo Business Park by Megaworld Corporation in Mandiriao. Its construction was completed in September 2015 in time for the APEC 2015. It is a two-story structure with a total floor area of 11,832 square meters. The main hall on the ground floor has a 3,700-seat capacity and 500-seat function rooms on the second floor. A rooftop of 1,500 SQM is available for outdoor functions. The convention center was designed by Ilongo architect William Cascaluela. The design was inspired by Iloilo's Dinagayang and Pararigata festivals. Iloilo has various facilities also for international and local musical, band, and solo performances or concerts and the famous and largest concert theater in the western Visayas region is the Rose Memorial Auditorium or Rose on Central Philippine University's main campus. The prestigious National Bombo Music Festival is held annually at the Rose. The auditorium is a two-story structure and can occupy or has a maximum capacity of 4,000 plus spectators. Rose Memorial along with Central Philippine University has been and is the only theater, auditorium and university in the western Visayas region that has been designated one of the first batch of nine cultural center of the Philippines Regional Art Centers or Kaisa Sa Signing Regional Art Centers in 2014 in the whole Philippines. Entertainment, Performing and Visual Arts 
The colonial influence of Spanish and American culture has created an imprint in art and entertainment scene Iloilo. The city and province has produced a notable people in the field of cinema and entertainment. The arts and entertainment sectors in Iloilo flourished during the time when Iloilo was opened to the international trade when the Puerto de Iloilo, Port of Iloilo, was opened to foreign ships to dock from different countries. The annual Iloilo Film Festival, which is held during the Dinagayang Festival, has a plethora of films being screened during the festival's event. There had been old cinema theaters in the old central business district of Calle Real, but they do not now operate because of the development of modern shopping malls with cinemas in the metropolis which replaced their once and glorious days in the heritage zone of Calle Real in the city center. Modern day cinemas in the metropolis screens with a wide array of present day films both national and from foreign countries. The arts and entertainment initiatives with the Film Development Council of the Philippines under the office of the Philippine President City has established its presence in the city as the regional cultural and arts center of Western Visayas through the establishment of Cinematech Theater which showcases various screened films. Cultural representations in the perspective of performing and visual arts holds numerous concerts throughout the year with some showcased by universities cultural groups and organizations in the city. The largest theater and auditorium in Western Visayas is the Rose Memorial Auditorium in Central Philippine University. Rose Memorial has and had been a venue of concerts of renowned international Philippine singers and bands. The auditorium is also the venue of the annual prestigious National Bombo Music Festival that draws homegrown music artists from all over the Philippines. Universities in Iloilo on the other hand, has a vital role with various established cultural and art groups that gained foothold that held and performed in various cultural performances nationally and internationally in which some are sponsored national cultural government agencies. The University of San Agustin has established the USA Troubadours while Central Philippine University the CPU Bahandi Singers, CPU Handbell Choir, the first eight-octave handbell choir in the Philippines, and the CPU Sari SAOT Dance Troupe. Architecture, Cityscape and Sustainability Architecture Iloilo City's urban planning and architecture reflect the plans of the Spanish and the American colonial administrations. Since Iloilo City is a conglomeration of towns, the districts have their own plazas which are surrounded by establishments of political and ecclesiastical influence, such as churches and old administrative halls. In 1930, Juan M. Arellano of the Bureau of Public Works designed the schematic plan for Iloilo City, which was influenced by Ebenezer Howard's Garden City. The Spanish colonial influence is strongly imprinted not only in Iloilo's history and cultural background but also the architectural perspective. The city S regaled status during the Spanish colonial era until the turn of the 20th century is implied during by the sugar boom with ubiquitous stately mansions and edifices built by the old money Alongo sugar baron and elite families which contrast to the city's economic importance as a second city next to Manila during the said era in the Philippines. The city's other moniker, City of Mansions, is likewise implied because Iloilo holds 240 mansions in which 30 of it are grand mansions built during the Spanish and American colonial eras. The ravaged Fuerte de San Pedro, Fort San Pedro is Iloilo's ground zero as there was no Iloilo city back in the 1600s. As a fortress, Fort San Pedro was built solely by the Spaniards to protect Iloilo from the marauding pirates and privateers. The fort is the second Spanish-built fort after the one in Cebu, also Fort San Pedro, in the Philippines and Asia. The foundation of the Fort San Pedro was substantial to the Spanish Empire's stronghold as Panay Island with Iloilo as their second colonial center established through the Iloilo precursor towns of Aden 1566, and La Villa Rica de Arevalo 1581. Aden which was founded as early as 1566 but formally established in 1572 was the actual second seat of Spanish colonial powers but due to pirate attacks, they moved the capital eastward and established the La Villa Rica de Arevalo. 
The town of La Villa Rica de Arevalo holds some of the fine example of Spanish-built mansions like the mansion of the Spanish governor-general, but were destroyed when the pirates ransacked and destroyed the town. It was in the said frequent events of pirate attacks that the Spaniards moved finally the capital further eastward in the mouth of Rio de Iloilo, Iloilo River, which is flanked and protected by Guimaras Island across it. It was in the said establishment of the city on the mouth of Iloilo River that as years go by, the city flourished to its heights especially in the economic and regal importance in the Spanish and American eras. La Villa Rica de Arevalo, Arevalo is the first Spanish-named town in the Philippine Islands. It is also in Arevalo that the third oldest image of Holy Child Jesus, Señor Santo Niño, in the Philippines was brought by the Spaniards. Notable present-day structures that are repositories that attest to the town's former glory as a Spanish precursor town of Iloilo is the mansion of Belay Camina Nabato and the Convento de Arevalo. During the Spanish and American eras, the city developed its own unique charm that exudes a typical European city in the east which differed it from other cities just like the old Manila in the Philippines. It was in the said eras that architectural perspective of Iloilo flourished with European-styled edifices and stately mansions was built which stands of Iloilo's once economic and political importance in its heyday. Calle Real, Spanish for Royal Street, which stretches from Plaza Leta Gay up to Plaza Alfonso XII, Plaza Libertad, is Iloilo. S.A. Scolta, a famous heritage street in Manila, lined with commercial edifices that possesses European designs. Calle Real is Iloilo's old central business district and is considered as the second most preserved heritage business district in the Philippines. The street during the Iloilo's economic heyday during the late 19th and early 20th centuries when the Puerto de Iloilo, Port of Iloilo, was open to the international trade is a melting pot and common ground for people of different walks of life, race and color. Stores back then in Calle Real sells luxury goods and items from all over the world. Iloilo also possesses structures built during the prelude of the American colonial period in the Philippines. Aduana de Iloilo, Iloilo Customs House, and Old Iloilo City Hall are notable of the structures built during the said colonial period. Iloilo Customs House, the second largest customs house after the Aduana in Manila was built the famous Filipino architect Juan M. Arellano. In farther north is the town of Jaro, the largest of all the district of the city of Iloilo. Once a separate city before it merged with the city of Iloilo in the 1940s, is considered as a town of piousness, old rich and grandeur. Many notable Spanish Alangos settled in the said area and built their grand mansions and villas. The town's architecture is heavily influenced by the Hispanic and American cultures. Grand mansions with imposing European-styled facades and motifs of Buena Familias, Spanish families of Jaro like the Lopez, Ledesma, Lazaras, Gelandoni, Javalana and Loxan families that some of it lines the first millionaire row in the Philippine Islands still stands to this day. Two of notable mansions that attest to Jaro's importance as an old rich town that developed out of the sugar boom during the Spanish colonial period is the Mansion de López Lopez Mansion, or Nelly Garden and the Beaux Arts styled Villa Lazaras, Lazaras Mansion, which houses at present the Angelicum School Iloilo of the Dominicans. Religion is also a crucial factor that influenced Jaro's architectural and town plan perspective as it is the cradle of Christian faith in Western Visayas. The Spanish which brought the Roman Catholic faith established the Jaro Cathedral National Shrine of the Our Lady Candles with its separate belfry located across it, one of the few churches in the Philippines with a detached belfry, and the Seminario Colegio de San Vicente Ferrer the first institution of higher learning in Western Visayas. The advent of American colonialization which brought Protestantism has resulted also to the establishment of institutions. Fine examples of institutions with edifices possessing American architecture and influence includes the Central Philippine University by the Protestant Baptists in 1905 which holds century-old American colonial-styled edifices, the Convention of Philippine Baptist Churches which housed at the European-styled former Rupert Montanola Mansion in Fajardo, Jaro, and the Jaro Evangelical Church, the first Baptist church in the Philippine Islands, are among the few of the notable institutions that holds a number of structures that possesses American American architectural influence design. 
The town of Molo located westward of the La Punta city proper, is sometimes called Parian or Chinese town during the Spanish colonial times. Old rich Molo influential families helped shape the town's not only economical but political and architectural sphere. The town just like the more Spanish or mestizo town of Jaro has also a plethora of mansions built by old rich Chinese Spanish Alongo Loxan, Laxan, Saison, Lazan and Pisan families. The Molo Church, Iglesia de Santa Ana, which was built under the supervision of some of the members of notable Molo families like the Loxans, is the first and only feminist church outside Manila with its imposing facade with Gothic influence facing the Plaza Molo. The Yusei Kanzing Mansion or Molo Mansion located just across the Plaza Molo and Molo Church was bought by the retail and real estate giant SM Group has been refurbished and restored to its former glory and is now a houses several cultural stores and a mini museum which exhibits several artworks and native products. The present economic boom of the 21st century has spurred modern developments across the city. Huge investments of big real estate developers built modern malls and shopping centers, tall and modern edifices and skyscrapers which sprouted up especially in new cities, Central Business Center, which occupies a huge land area in the town of Mandiriao. The first tallest skyscraper in western Visayas, the Injip Tower of the Double Dragon Properties could be found in the area. Hotels and condominiums and tree-lined avenues with jogging and bicycle lanes have also been built during the city's economic renaissance up to the present. The Iloilo's festival-inspired iconic Iloilo Convention Center is also located in the Iloilo Business Park. Cityscape Iloilo spreads out with its location in a plain land in southeastern side of Panay Island. It is bounded in the southeast side by Iloilo Guimaras Strait and Guimaras Island which makes the city as a natural harbor for ships. The two main rivers of Iloilo and Badiano snakes through the city and empties out of the Iloilo Guimaras Strait. Iloilo is a conglomerate of former separate towns which includes the former city of Jaro established during the Spanish colonial times, thus the layout of the town's civic centers follows a typical Spanish colonial town center composed of a plaza, public square, church, municipal hall and other religious, academic and government instrumentalities offices. There are also numerous recent development initiatives that the city government is pushing through such as the redevelopment of Iloilo City Civic Center which includes the Iloilo City Hall with the revitalization of the former Plaza de Aduana, or Sunburst Park and the relocation and building of the new Freedom Grandstand at the Mule Loni, Loni Wharf, with pocket size and mini gardens. The said same initiative is also being laid out and undertaken with the provincial capital complex of the Iloilo Provincial Government with initial phase of the Iloilo Provincial Jail being renovated and restored that became the National Museum of the Philippines, Western Visayas Regional Museum. A modern development is clustered in an organized form in the city's premises but is strongly concentrated in the Mandiriao district to protect the city's initiatives in protecting the city's skyline, heritage zones and environment. Present modern developments spread out outside the city in neighboring towns that are a part of metropolitan Iloilo. Sustainability The city has been a champion in air quality initiatives that further implied when in one in the 2017 Clean Air City Award given by the Clean Air Philippine Movement. The award is given to urban centers and cities whose initiatives in good urban planning is to maintain a good air quality for its citizens to be a more livable and air pollution Philippine cities. For the second time, Iloilo City has been conferred the Galing Puk Award for its entry the Iloilo Batiano River Development Project. The award recognizes best local government practices worthy of replication by other local government units LGUs. The city is endowed with various parks, open spaces and gardens that which contribute the city's government initiatives in protecting and preserving its urban scape for city dwellers to benefit from. The Iloilo River Esplanade which stretches on both sides of Iloilo River which has been designed a renowned Filipino architect Paolo Alcazarin who designed the famous Clark Key in Singapore, is the longest linear park and riverside boulevard in the Philippines. Economy Iloilo City is a hub for trade, commerce, finance, technology, medical tourism, hospitality, real estate, tourism, education, and industry in the western Visayas region. 
Major industries in the city include management of port facilities, telecommunications infrastructure and utilities, banking and finance, retail trading, real estate, tourism and business process outsourcing. The local government has provided incentives to businesses in certain investment areas, such as income tax holidays and free issuance of permits and licenses. It is the home of Mang I Nasal headquartered in Iloilo. Trade and industry There were 8,407 business establishments as of December 2003 in Iloilo City, of which 1,182 are new. Total capital investments for new business establishments is P365,506,020.92. However, both new and renewed capital investments for the year 2003 amounted to 13.02 billion pesos. Of the employed person by type of industry from primary occupation 82% belongs to service sector, 14% belongs industry sector and only 4% are in agriculture, as of April 2003 FICE, NSO. Average annual family income at current prices is P283,604 or a percentage increase of 32.3 between 1994 and 1997 while average annual family expenditures is P226,887 or a 25.6% increase 2000 FICE. Average per capita income is P65,136 and average per capita expenditures is P51,557 Average inflation rate is 3.2, the average purchasing power of the peso is 0.62 and the average consumer price index CPI, is 162.6 in 2003. Source, NSO, Prices Section Outsourcing the BPO industry has spurred employment. BPO locators are attracted to Iloilo because of the literacy rate and number of graduates per year. The Department of Science and Technology Information and Communications Technology Office Dust ICTO, and Business Processing Association of the Philippines BPAP, has named Iloilo City as one of the next wave cities. This means that Iloilo City is capable to host information technology business process outsourcing it BPO companies on the basis of availability of talent and relevant infrastructure. The city is now officially a city of excellence, which means that it levels the city of Manila and Cebu in terms of economic progress. It has a number of IT, BPO centers among them is the Iloilo Ayala Techno Hub, Amigo Plaza Mall, SM City Iloilo Estates and Plazuela de Iloilo which houses BPO companies. Another IT, BPO centers is in Iloilo International Business Park at the STA. Barbara Heights and Iloilo Business Park, both by Megaworld Corporation and the Iloilo City Center by the Gaisano Group. It has business process outsourcing, BPO, office buildings undergoing construction. Retail Retail industry has a big relevant presence in Iloilo City. During the Spanish and American colonial times, the center of city's retail industry is Calle Real, or Royal Street, which stretches from Plaza Libertad to Plaza Leta Gay. Stores that lines along the stretch of the street sells luxury goods is flocked by Caucasians from all over and the world which is bolstered in contrast to the opening of the city's port to the international trade. The popularity of Calle Real as the shopping and retail hub of Iloilo declined in the 1980s up to the present because of modern and big shopping malls that has been built and sprouted up in the city. Modern developments brought by big Philippine real estate giant companies, SM Prime Holdings, Robinson's Land Corporation, Megaworld Corporation, and Ayala has fueled the popularity of mall culture in Iloilo and has generated thousands of job positions that resulted to big return of investments for the aforementioned companies and income to Iloilo City. It is Iloilo that SM Delgado, first SM outside Manila was built in the 1970s. Big shopping centers of said real estate players include, SM City Iloilo by SM Prime Holdings, the largest SM Supermall in Western Visayas, one of the largest in the Philippines, Robinson's Place Iloilo and Robinson's Place Jaro, both by Robinson's Land Corporation, and by Megaworld Corporation's Festive Walk Iloilo, the first full-scale, Megaworld lifestyle mall outside Luzon and Festive Walk Parade the longest dining strip in the Philippines. 
Transportation Public Transport Iloilo City is served mostly by passenger jeepneys, white metered taxis and tricycles within the city limits. The passive jeepneys of Iloilo are known for their sleek and sedan-like design. These often serve fixed routes and mostly travel on the city's major and secondary roads. Jeepneys are also the main mode of transportation to metropolitan Iloilo areas. Tricycles serve most secondary roads and city communities. Large passive jeepneys and buses link Iloilo City to the rest of the province and the island of Panay. Buses bound for Metro Manila, Mindoro, Batangas, Cebu, Negros and Mindanao are also available via the roll-on, roll-off ferry services of the Strong Republic Nautical Highway. Mini shuttle vans also serve major points in Panay Island. Iloilo is one of the few cities in the Philippines that recently initiated to adopt the mini bus like type modern Pudge or modern jeepneys in contrast to the President Rodrigo Duterte's administration to phase out the old dilapidated jeepneys as the mode of mass public transportation in the Philippines. Integrated Transport Terminals Iloilo City has five major integrated transport terminals located at the city's perimeter areas, the Iloilo North ITS Integrated Transport System Terminal, Iloilo North Series Bus Terminal, NCBT, located at Tagbac, Jaro District is the transport hub serving passengers to, from northwestern municipalities of Iloilo, City of Posse and northwestern Panay, Capiz and Aklan including Boracay Island, Iloilo Central Line ITS Integrated Transport System Terminal Pavia People's Terminal PPT, in Unca, Jaro District is the transport terminal for passengers to, from central municipalities of Iloilo, Alianzan its Integrated Transport System Terminal at Hibao, and in Mandiriao for those to, from the upland municipalities of San Miguel, Alamodian and Leon, including Bukari, Leon, Iloilo South its Integrated Transport System Terminal, Iloilo South Series Bus Terminal SCBT, located at Mohan in Via de Arevalo for going to, from the southern municipalities of Iloilo and to, from the province of Antique, and Iloilo North Coast its Integrated Transport System Terminal at Ticud, La Paz District for those going to, from the northern coastal municipalities of Iloilo, including Sicagon Island and Isla de Gigante all part of Carl's, Iloilo. Cycling the city has been hailed and earned its reputation as the bicycling capital of the Philippines, a yielded effort through the recent modern economic renaissance of Iloilo City by the local and the national government units and different stakeholders by educating the city locals on importance of a bike-able city and building dedicated bicycle lanes on city main thoroughfares. The metropolis has a network of nearly 100 kilometers of bicycle lanes and the longest of which is located along the stretch of Diversion Road. The annual Iloilo Bike Festival has drawn bicycling enthusiasts throughout the country. Railway From 1907 to the 1980s, Panay Railways operated a railroad from Roxas City to the port area of Mule Loni along the Iloilo River in Iloilo City. Airport Iloilo International Airport is the fourth busiest in the Philippines with international flight to Singapore and Hong Kong and vice versa serving passengers from western Visayas region, Palawan and Mindanao. For domestic flights to, from Metro Manila, Cataclan, Cebu, Cuyo, Puerto Princesa, Cipolle, General Santos City, Cagayan de Oro and Davao City, Iloilo International Airport is the airport serving the general area of metropolitan Iloilo, Guimaras, the province of Antique and the rest of Iloilo province. It is located 19 kilometers 12 miles northwest of Iloilo City on a 188 hectares 460 acres site in the town of Cabachuan. It opened to commercial traffic on June 14, 2007, replacing the old Iloilo Airport at the Mandiriao District. The new airport inherited its IATA and ICAO airport codes. It is linked to the city through Senator Benigno S. Aquino Jr. Avenue and served by metered taxis, airport shuttle vans and multicabs. Recently, the national government has approved the 791 million pesos budget for the expansion of the Iloilo International Airport. Seaport The port of Iloilo is the port serving the general area of Iloilo and the premier port in the western Visayas region. The new port of Iloilo is located on a site away from the older port facilities. It is situated in the southern coast of Panay Island, in the Panay Gulf. 
With Guimaras Island guarding the port from violent storms, it has one of safest and most natural harbors in the Philippines. The Iloilo International Port Complex IIPC, is located on 20.8 hectares of reclaimed land. It has modern facilities that include 11,400 square meters of open space for unhampered operations, supplemented by a backup area of 97,000 square meters, a crane, one, rails of 348 lineal meters, roll-on-roll-off support, a 7,800 container freight stations, and a 720 square meter passenger shed. The port complex is ideal for ships plying international routes having a berth length of 400 meters, a width of 26.26 meters and a berthing depth of 10.50 meters. It is currently expanding with the reclamation of the west side seafront portion of the complex. The Iloilo Domestic Port Complex IDPC, located near Fort San Pedro and formerly the Old Foreign Pier, serves inter-island passenger and cargo ferries which serves the routes Manila, Palawan, Cebu, Zamboanga and Cagayan de Oro. It is located near the mouth of Iloilo River at the vicinity of the Western Visayas Regional Government Center at the city proper district. It is also the port of call for several domestic shipping companies such as Superferry or 2GO Travel, Negros Navigation, Sulpicio Lines, Cocoliang Shipping, Trans-Asia Shipping Lines and others. The colloquial name, Fort San Pedro, refers to the old Spanish fortress beside it that was destroyed during World War II and soon to be restored by the Department of Tourism dot, under TIEZA. Mule Loni or Iloilo River Wharf is the original port of the city. Opened to international trade in 1855, it has served as the trans-shipment docks for Muscovado sugar in the late 19th to the first half of the 20th century. It has undergone several times of expansion and improvement. Today, it serves smaller cargo ships, roll-on-roll-off ferries bound for Guimaras and Negros Island and fast ferries that ply Iloilo Bacolod route regularly. In September 2014, the newly opened Iloilo River Port Complex IRPC, at Lapuz District started its operation to replace the Iloilo River Wharf. Iloilo Guimaras Jetty Ports for Guimaras Outrigger Ferries are located at Calle Ortiz and Parola. The terminal at Calle Ortiz served Jordan, Guimaras bound passenger and cargo outrigger boats, while Parola Terminal served Buenavista, Guimaras bound ferries. Soon the Iloilo Jetty Port Complex IJPC, at the Western Visayas Regional Government Center will replace the two jetty ports. The complex is complete with a modern passenger terminal building, a pump boat fuel refilling station, a 1.3 hectares 3.2 acres children's park with a marine museum and a city mall complex by Double Drangan Properties. This project of the city government was achieved through public-private partnership. Roll-on, roll-off ferry service, known in as RORO, is available from to Iloilo City. There is also a RORO service to Cebu via Negros. It is ranked third in terms of ship calls at 11,853, fourth in cargo throughout at 491,719 million metric tons and fourth in passenger traffic at 2.4 million annually. The Iloilo Fish Port Complex IFPC, is the only and the major center of fish trading and marine products processing in all of Visayas. The port complex is the traditional landing site of bagnetters and other fishing bankas in Iloilo City and nearby towns. This strategic location has made the port the major fish marine source of major supermarkets, hotels and restaurants and local public markets in the country and abroad. Its services includes, unloading and marketing facilities for fish and other fishery, aquatic products both for local and foreign markets, services and facilities for harbor operations such drydocking, repair shop, fuel, oil, water and ice conveyance and for transshipping products, processing, refrigeration and other post-harvest services including product pre-processing, freezing through contact freezer, cold storages and top-grade facilities for the processing of marine products such as prawn, abalone, cuttlefish, lobster, nylon shell, octopus, slippertail, squid, whiting and bangus, and raw land for the establishment of fishery-related factories. The complex is situated in a 21-hectare reclamation at southern part of the city proper district. 
Recently, the Fish Port Complex was granted 570 million pesos for the expansion of its facilities which will include the construction of a new fish processing plant, establishment of a fish canning facility and the construction of an alternative energy source. Power and energy a 72 MW diesel fuel power plant operated by Panay Power Corporation and a 164 MW coal power plant operated by Panay Energy Development Corporation PEDC, provides power generation for Iloilo City, both situated in Brgy. Ingor in La Paz District. PEDC plans for a third coal-fired power generation facility. The newest generator will be on top of the existing 164 MWs for an additional 150 megawatt to be generated that will help produce a total of 404 megawatt supply for Panay, Guimaras and Negros Islands. Power distribution is facilitated by Panay Electric Company, Peco. Peco is the sole power distributor in Iloilo City and it is one of the oldest private electricity distribution utilities in the country which has been operating since 1923. Media The city and the province of Iloilo is served by mostly tabloid-type English newspapers such as Panay News, The Daily Guardian, News Express, and Sunstar Iloilo. Hublas of Panay News is the sole Hiligaynon tabloid newspaper. Iloilo has a glossy full-color lifestyle magazine named Cream Magazine published monthly since 1989. Iloilo City is the main headquarters of Bombo Radio Philippines, which owns Bombo Radio AM stations and Star FM stations across the country. Being the urban center of the province, most of the AM and FM radio stations serve the province of Iloilo and Guimaras, mostly local stations of national radio stations. Television arrived in the city in 1964 when DYAF TV began airing, serving Iloilo City and the neighboring towns in the province. In 1998, with the frequency transfer to Channel 10, AVCBN separated its news team from the Bacolod news team and launched TV Patrol Iloilo, today TV Patrol Panay. In 1967, TV6 Iloilo, a TV5 affiliate, stated its initial broadcast in Jaro, Iloilo City. By 1974 it changed its affiliation to GMA Network as their local television station. The channel started upgrading its facilities and relocated their TV tower to Guimaras and began serving Iloilo City, Panay and Guimaras, as well as some parts of Negros Occidental in 1998. Studio 23 Iloilo, UHF 38, changed its name to ABS-CBN Sports and Action on January 18, 2014, initiated its broadcast in 1999. The government television station, PTV, VHF-2, in 1992 and IBC, VHF-12, in 1977 are also broadcasting local programs for Iloilo. In the first quarter of 2010, QTV 28 Iloilo, UHF 28, changed its name to GMA News TV on February 28, 2011, and UNTV 42, UHF 42, commenced operations in the city. In second quarter of 2012, TV5 Iloilo, UHF 36, and Axion TV Iloilo, UHF 46, commenced operation, serving the southern part of western Visayas that includes southern Panay, Iloilo City and Guimaras, also formerly, Negros Occidental, and at the same time started its News 5 team coverage. Education being the center of education in western Visayas region, the city and the province of Iloilo has a total of 10 major universities. Iloilo City alone hosts eight large universities such as the University of the Philippines Visayas UPV, which houses the University of the Philippines High School in Iloilo UPHSI, Central Philippine University CPU, University of San Agustin USA, West Visayas State University WVSU, Iloilo Science and Technology University formerly WVCST ISATU, University of Iloilo UI, St. Paul University Iloilo SPUI, and John B. Laxon Foundation Maritime University, JBLFMU. 
Iloilo is also home to numerous private colleges and schools such as the Iloilo Doctors College IDC, 1PAREF Affiliated High School, the Westbridge School for Boys, St. Therese, MTC Colleges St. MTCC, Western Institute of Technology, WIT, DePaul College DPC, defunct, Ave International College of Business and Economics, Computer College of the Visayas, Dominican College of Iloilo, Great Savior College, AMA Computer College, Iloilo Campus, STI College, Iloilo, Interface Computer College, IMAPF, School of Midwifery, Philippine College of Aeronautics, Science and Technology, ACSI College Iloilo, ABA Institute of Technology, Iloilo Scholastic Academy, Hua Sion College of Iloilo, Sun Yat-sen High School, Kabalam Western College, St. Anne College of Iloilo, St. Augustine School of Nursing, Iloilo, Assumption Iloilo, run by the Congregation of the Religious of the Assumption, Ateneo de Iloilo, Santa Maria Catholic School, run by the Society of Jesus, Angelicum School Iloilo, run by the Order of Preachers, Philippine Science High School Western Visayas, Colegio de los Hijas de Jesus, or simply Hijas de Jesus which is run by the Congregation of the Daughters of Jesus, San Jose Catholic School, which is run by the Order of St. Augustine, Colegio de San Jose, CSJ, and Colegio del Sagrado Corazón de Jesus CSCJ, which are both run by the Congregation of the Daughters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul, an Asian College of Aeronautics. Colegio de San Jose is the oldest school for girls in Western Visayas which is now 141 years old. Iloilo is also home to numerous religious formation houses, St. Joseph Regional Seminary for Theologate Studies, the 148-year-old St. Vincent Ferrer Seminary for Collegiate Studies and Mill Hill Formation House of the Mill Hill Missionaries. In June 2012, the city government opened the Iloilo City Community College at Molo, Iloilo City. These universities and colleges in Iloilo is a testament to the city being the center of education in Western Visayas. The Department of Education, Division of Iloilo City covers 88 private schools and 52 public schools. Notable people Sister cities Local Quezon City, Metro Manila International Qingdao, Shandong, China, since 2003 Yulin, Guangxi, China, since 2011 Dedita, Guam Stockton, California, United States Notes References External links Iloilo City Government Official Website Iloilo Travel Website